In this video, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to create your first MCP server that's just going to do something really simple. It's just going to say hello world. Now I'm not going to type out all the code. We're just going to copy and paste a bit at a time because this doesn't really need to be that long and elaborate. I just want to explain the different parts and pieces of what an MCP server looks like under the hood. Just a basic one that just has a single tool. And I also want to show you the difference when you're using the MCP library versus the fast MCP library, because it is quite a lot of difference just in terms of the complexity. Okay. So we have two files here in our folder, our hello world server script, and then our MCP JSON file. And what we're going to do is we are going to actually start creating this MCP server. So the first thing that we could do is we could have our um, doc string, which is just metadata comments that are going to basically document our file. Now, this is an optional thing. It's just a code hygiene thing. So it's something that I do recommend you do, however, because it's going to make it easier for you to understand and manage your code over time, especially as this becomes more complex. So this is just a minimal server, and this is just some examples of how we could use it. So the next thing we need are our imports. So imports are going to be the libraries that we import that have functions and classes that we're going to use for different things. You'll notice that I also have these comments that have regions and end the region. And that is because I like to have these little markers in the mini map of the code here. Again, that's an optional code hygiene thing. So we're using two libraries, async IO for async await functionality. And we're also using the standard MCP library for the MCP server functionality. So very straightforward. The next thing we got to do is we have to create our server. So we need to instance our server. And after that, we need to actually start defining our tools. So we need to actually create a function from the server. We need to have a list tools function to be able to register what tools are available. And then we need to list the tools by name. So this is a list of our tools. We have the name of the tool, say hello, with a description, which is how the LLM is going to actually find that tool. So this is technically optional, but it's very important to be able to distinguish one tool from another, basically. Then we need to define the expected input parameters, such as the arguments. So in this case, there are none. But if you had something like a file path or something like this, then you would specify it here. And you need to say whether it's required or not. So these are the basic components of what a tool is. Now we're only listing the tools, but we need to give the server a way to actually call those tools. So we're going to do that by adding our call tool function, which is going to give names and arguments. So if the name is say hello, then we just want to return hello world. Otherwise, if it's something else, we just return an error. So very, very, very basic. Now we get a whole bunch of relatively complex boilerplate code which is just running our server. So this is just the main entry point for our server where we're going to specify basically the little bits and pieces that are necessary in order to get this thing running. So I'm not going to go into the technical details of this, especially because this is going to be taking care of us in the other library that we're going to use. Then we just have a basic runner to be able to run our server. So let's test this out. How do we add our server? So our review, we select command or standard input output. And then we will actually enter the command, which is Python, because it's a Python server, call it hello world. And then we just want to add it as a argument. So hello world server.py. That's it. So we want to restart. And if it works, then it's going to register the tool. So we can actually test this in GitHub Copilot, go and ask. And then we can hash say hello. So in GitHub Copilot, we can't implicitly mention the tool or server like we do in Cloud Desktop. We have to really explicitly mention it like this. So if we just say hello, what's up? Then we can see that it's working. And we can see that it's actually able to get this information. Perfect. So, and it gives us a whole bunch of verbose response back, but we're just going to ignore that for now. So that in a nutshell is how you set up a very, very basic MCP server and test it. Now, one last thing I want to show you is this is using the MCP library. 
Now, there's a different library in Python called FastMCP, and as its name suggests, it's a lot simpler and faster. So this is the code we need for MCP, about 100 lines. This is the code that we need for fast MCP, just 25 lines, very, very basic. We are here, we don't need to have separate functions to list and call our tools. And we also don't need all that boilerplate to specify the server. We just need to be able to say, hey, I'm gonna set up some tools. This is the tool name, this is the description, this is what it does. It's going to return a text and then if it was to do something else, I would have that functionality here in the middle. And we'll see examples of that in the next videos in this series. Then we run it and we good, that's it. That's all we need to do. So let's restart the server and let's test it to make sure it works again. New chat, ask, say hello. Hi, 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 hi. And it works. So we're able to get this working. So <laughs> that's kind of funny. Uh, so we're able to get this information back. So it looks like, uh, you know, fast MCP, the moral of the story here is that it is a more concise way to get going with our MCP server. Uh, but it's definitely useful to know about and pay attention to the other library, because there might be things in the MCP library that you need uh, for certain cases, depending on the complexity of your server. We're just setting up some really basic servers with some basic tools. Uh, of course, when you're creating a server that has prompts and that has resources, you're going to be doing a lot more things and there's more things that you need to pay attention to. But this is just a very basic overview of the fundamentals when you're creating your very first basic MCP server. So in the next video, we're going to be talking about adding some functionality in here, uh, reading some files, eventually also reading a database. So that's it. I hope you had fun and I will see you in the next one, I guess. I don't know, whatever.